Hello and welcome to today's interview with a very special professional in the area of event management. And I'm going to introduce my special guest, Sally Portios, in a moment. Let me start with myself, Sigrid Kast here. I'm a book writing and marketing specialist with a very unique program for coaches and consultants who want to raise their profile and position their expertise to attract more clients, new clients that are coming really easy. So today, as I just said, I have got professional event management uh, coordinator, manager, Sally with me. Hi, Sally. Great to have you here. Hi, Sigrid. Thank you for having me. It's been, it's a, it's a great pleasure. It's wonderful. Now, I know Sally personally. Uh, I have done a special program with, he, with her, and we're coming to that in a moment. Let me just tell you a little bit about Sally. Sally is the managing director of the event production company Red Lanyard, where she has produced festivals, conferences, events, meetings, everything to do with big and small events. Uh, Sally is also the creator of event planners of the event planners workshop, which is a series of training, coaching and mentoring programs and products. And they are targeted at the do it yourself event planner. So that is like you and me out there. And I know I can vouch for how easy it is to listen to Sally's expertise, the, the way she explains it in her program, and also the enormous amount of brilliant material that you can get in those uh, programs and courses with her to really launch your own event. Now, for people who write a book, this is important at the point in time when you're going to launch it. That's not the only time. You also can use the knowledge of event planning at any point in time in your business to launch any type of event in your business. Sally, I haven't stopped talking now. It's your turn. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you come into this whole area of event planning? Thank you, Sigrid. Um, well, like most things, I think uh, we fall into professions uh, that sit on the sidelines of those typical professions. So uh, I, if I reflect back on my career, I've actually been planning events since I first started work, uh, but it didn't actually come to light for me as an actual profession until I was working for a state government authority and I was producing very high profile uh, an event, a particular event type for a very high profile a customer, you might say. And uh, I thought they were just, I was just going along and doing what I do. And other people who were working with me were astonished at how easy I found this activity. Um, and they, of course, did not. So that got me thinking. Uh, and I realized then that, oh, this is a profession. This is something people don't know how to do. So I went and studied. So then I went to university and I did a master's in creative industries, production and arts management. And that was really to get to know uh, the, the formal process of event planning. Like a lot of people, we don't think we're qualified enough. Mm. Um, so we go off and get qualifications. But I had been in the music industry for a long time. I'd been doing music tours and festivals. I'd been uh, launching people's careers uh, they're launching their records that they'd produce, that kind of thing. So it kind of just, yeah, dovetailed into, oh, this is this is a thing that, mm. that people do. And it's interesting, isn't it, that we we until we stop and think about what took us to the point that we are at right now, we don't sometimes realize that lots of little steps took part previously that got us there. Now I see, uh, Sally, you've always been, you've also been the venue protocol manager for the 2018 Commonwealth Games, and they were right here in um, in Australia, obviously. And I mean, that's a, that's a big event, isn't it? So you really have, um, by what you are, what you have done already, a lot, an enormous amount of experience and obviously yeah. expertise, or you would not have been part of that. How yes, yes, indeed. That was that was a wonderful opportunity, uh, and 
what that actually means is you look after what's called the games family and that's all of the very important people that are a part of the games the chef de missions the you know all of the people that look after everyone else it's not actually family in our traditional context Mm -hmm. the fun part about that event though it was uh, for the shooting which is on a you know 300 square kilometer site wow Uh, yeah the number of steps I did a day was pretty phenomenal. <laughs> but a wonderful opportunity to learn about shooting. And that's what I love about events is I get to learn about yeah. all different fields all the time. Um, it's that's that's my favorite part about yeah. producing events is, I- is that learning experience. That's lovely. And I guess it, it sort of, you know, it, uh, it parallels a little bit when I work with um, with people who write a book that I get to yeah. learn them, their business and, and what they're thinking a, a little bit deeper. So you, you're doing that in the event sphere. Yeah. So um, I think maybe, you know, launching a or, or a, a book launch event, there are different ideas around that. A sort of a traditional way of thinking is that um, it's being announced and invitations go out and people are invited to come to a place somewhere and the author has some books ready that they're going to sign and uh, people will buy the books. It's a, it's a, it's a great event, uh, might, might get some PR with media being there and so on. That's sort of the traditional way. Now we're living in very different times. Aside what's happening um, uh, overall different times have been on the move for a long time with the whole online world and of Mm. course authors are there that they can spread their message and their knowledge about themselves globally so from an event creation event planning um, perspective where you as the professional have all the finer details tell us a little bit about how from your perspective it looks or has looked like and what might have changed recently around that type Mm -hmm. of event there would have been changes yeah yeah I think if I reflect on the book launch events I've done in the past Mm -hmm. they have been uh, and this is probably before I've spent the last at least three years really studying uh the value of events so previous to that um, they were more like a party as you say you would send a bunch of invitations out you would invite people to come that may have played a part in the production of your book you may invite family of course you'd uh, essentially want to celebrate that that is typically in my experience the book launches I've I've done Mm -hmm. that's that's been the reason behind doing the book launch I think what has probably changed now is we have to really focus in on the purpose and the audience so what do we want to do what like what is the reason behind actually launching a book whether we launch it online in person on social media via PR however we do it why are we doing it? Um, and to what audience? Like, what does the audience want to get out of this? So for me, the audience is the most important part. And I say this with love at every workshop I do now. Um, as much as I love you, I don't care about you. I care about your audience. And if I can help your audience get a better experience through giving you better knowledge, that is my goal. That's what I, I want to achieve. <laughs> I love it, Sally. And that is so important too, from the book writing perspective in the first instance, then to the to the launch, because um, there's not really any point in just your family loving what you've done, but it is about who's going to read the book, why are they going to want to read it, and what are they going to do in response to having read it. And that is exactly what I've heard you just say about the launch event so purpose and audience is important fantastic so on the do-it-yourself stage that would be one way of doing it and then you are also doing it aren't you you are oh yes yeah 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 tell us a little bit about what the differences are in those two scenarios please well uh as I say, the audience is the central cog to everything that occurs for you. And 
the DIY versus do it for you. The DIY can sometimes find the producer in a position where they are caught in the logistics, they're caught in venue selection or even platform selection. So even if you were going to do it online, for example, you might find yourself caught up in the setting up of the landing page and all, and all of the logistics that happen around it. If you're doing it in a physical lo location, uh, you can find yourself spending days looking for venues and evaluating venues and menus and all of that kind of thing. Um, what's happening during that time, though, is you're not really thinking about who needs to come. So my process is um, your, your purpose, your audience, your objectives and your outcomes. So there's four things that mm -hmm. I focus on. Mm -hmm. So with, with the audience, they can often get left behind because we're caught up in the logistics. So the do it for you, make sure you have time to pay attention to your audience and your content that you're going to give to your audience because someone else is looking after all those nitty gritty things, which actually add up to an enormous amount of um, time and energy yeah, put into yeah. your event. And I just want to jump in there too. Um, from the, the work I've done with you, um, it, it was amazing to see some finer details that as a person on the outside not being in that industry does not immediately think about it and even from a marketing background you know where I'm coming from um yes we sort of have a bit of a checklist in our mind when we when we you know want to have an event on something you are bringing that extra layer of depth to it and that is I think also what helps this stand out success having it done by somebody professional because you have that layer and you're thinking of all those details particularly the outcome that the person wants to achieve mm. brilliant have you got a little story or example around an event that you've created where something went really well or maybe a hiccup something <laughs> you'd like to share <laughs> people always love hiccups don't they <laughs> yes 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 in relation to audience um, yes, if, if that yeah. comes to mind for you or whatever comes to mind yeah. while I'm putting you on the spot here with my question. <laughs> no, look, I've got plenty of examples. I think um, the challenge, Sigrid, is that what goes on the road stays on the road. What goes on stage stays on stage. So um, <laughs> it can also be challenging to give examples uh, without giving away what it is. Of but course, of I course. Think, um, one example of someone maybe not paying attention to audience is uh, if you think about a corporate event and the entertainment is booked and uh, I'm running a challenge at the moment in my closed Facebook group and I've just done the one on entertainment and at this particular event a comedian was booked and comedians can be polarizing mm -hmm. as can any content and uh, the, the booker just didn't really understand the audience and, of course, the comedian not only fell flat, they actually offended the whole audience and it really destroyed. Yeah, yeah. So I guess really it is to at least have somebody like you to have a conversation with, to have a meeting with, to point details out. And I'm sure you have in your whole range of offers, courses and programs, something like that available so that's yes. yes. that yeah and, and even if you don't like yes i certainly so my coaching program does that you essentially get your your backup plan along the way yeah, but, but even if you don't do that don't ever produce an event in a silo by yourself mm. um because we all think our own ideas are great ideas <laughs> um and also those closest to us think our ideas are great ideas too so it's really important that you do bounce off somebody yeah. who can give you a critical eye, not criticise you, but give you a critical eye. No doubt the same as, uh, you know, when you've finished your book and you want some people to read it and review it and give you some critique on it. Um, the same goes for your event idea of how you want to produce this and what it is you want to offer your audience mm. exactly the same way. I, and you've just touched on a really important point, and that's why I'm so 
glad that you've agreed to speak with me and share some of your experience and your knowledge with the with the people that are wanting to write a book because it is great to gain knowledge by just searching for it or listening to someone else telling them or even listening to someone who might have done it and thinking yes I might just you know do that mm. but it comes down to the professional like you are who knows that industry you've been in that industry for quite some time you've seen changes you've seen how things can be done differently sometimes how they have to be done differently and a person with a professional approach to something is not only able to see the big picture but also to make decisions very quickly I would imagine when something is going on in an event or for an event um, yeah. brilliant so definitely for people to consider at least having a conversation with someone like you to get an idea of how they could look at a launch, whether, again, as I said, whether that is the book launch particularly or some other launch in their business. Sally, if I was to put you on the spot and say, what would you consider one or up to three maybe main steps people really need to focus on or know about to create an event? Sure. Um First of all, what do you want to share? That's that's the main thing. It cut, this comes back to the purpose. So really think clearly about um, why you want to talk about what you want to talk about in whatever platform, live, in person, in real life, online, regardless of where um, you want to share this message, why do you want to share this message? Um, if I reflect back on my music industry experience, when you're launching a tour, when you're launching a record, any of those kinds of things, um, the reason I would get pulled into producing these events for other people is because I would help them focus on the audience. So they would want to put on a party. They're creatives. They're musicians. Of course they do. They want to get all their friends to come in and they want all their friends to help them celebrate. But you can actually do that somewhere else at someone else's expense <laughs> you can have a party at home and get the same result be very clear about who your audience is and why you want them to come if you're going to invest all the time and energy in a book launch again regardless of how you're doing it you want to make sure that you're going to get a three four five times return on investment on that launch you don't just want to have a party you can do that at any time what you want to do is make sure that your audience is made up of people who will then go in three, four, five times your effort out. So they, they may not buy your book. Maybe you don't want buyers there. Again, you could probably go and do a signing in a bookstore or, or some sort of online version of that these days. Mm -hmm. um, but you actually want people who are going to go out there and talk about your book who will... 10 times the sales of those books or get them into the places that you want to get them into. So the audience you invite, be very, very strategic about that audience um, and make sure you break it down into some percentages. And look, I know you're going to want to invite your parents or your husband or your children or your aunties and uncles, etc. Can I tell you to keep that to less than 20% of your audience? All right. So I hold networking events for the event managers network and I could be flooded with suppliers if I let it happen. If I let it happen, my room will be filled with hoteliers, PA people, AV people. I am very strategic about making sure that my audience is 30% suppliers, 70% event producers. And I'm always pushing the suppliers to get more event producers there if it's not the right balance. So very, be very strategic about your audience percentage um, breakdown and make sure that at least 70% of that audience are people who can either buy your book, sell your book, promote your book, advocate for your book, something like that. So that's, that's number two. So there's your purpose and your audience. Is that, do you want one more? If you have another one, share I it. Do. I do. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to join outcomes, objective and outcomes together. So um, an objective, and sometimes people get this mixed up with purpose, but your objective is something quite specific that you want to achieve out of the book launch. So it might be, for example, 
you want um, five PR companies to come to your event so you can get maximum reach for your book, something along like those sorts of lines. Um, but you might say, for example, your objective is you want to get as many PR companies as possible or you want to get PR companies to come to your event launch. The outcome is, um, the specific outcome you're looking for is I want five. And of that five, I want three from this particular market and I want two from this particular market. So you get very specific. So just to encapsulate that, it's purpose. Okay, really know why you're doing this launch. Audience, make sure that the audience you have invited is 70%, at least 70% advocates um, or sellers or buyers or something that's going to push your book along the line. And then the third thing is your objective. What do you want to get out of this launch and your outcome, the very, very specifics of those. I thank you very much for sharing those three really important points. And what I love the most, Sally, is that you are coming to this with the professional business look approach. Now, often, as you said before, friends and family and from your music industry background, people just want to have fun. That is all very well. But when you are doing something for your business and with a book particularly too, it's kind of building your brand as well. You are yes. building up who you are by writing a book in a specific way. And you want to make sure that what exactly are you going to share? That's an important part of it because you're not just going to have them all come in eat and drink or if it's online you know in their own area but you want to also share something with them tell something um talk about the book or the purpose or your method something like that and then the audience bringing in strategically i love it sally that is just great now i have to ask you these are some uh, points that people can actually get from your event guide is that correct you Absolutely. have got wonderful yes, definitely, definitely so we're going to put a link at the bottom of this video where you can download sally's free event guide from her website so that you can look back and have a have a detailed look at what she offers and what tips she has in there like the three she's just you've just shared with us thank you mm -hmm. and the the objective and the outcome that is so important because it is the outcome that people have in mind that's the first point I talk to clients about sometimes they just oh, I just want to write a book and I just want to it'll yeah. be fun and, and, and you know I feel good and it'll that's, sit on my shelf all beautifully yeah <laughs> That's exactly right. But that, that, but that's not the point. You know, you need to have what is going to come, your outcome. I love when you say, for example, specifically five PR companies, you want to have them attend, you know, because that can help with a further spread or create uh, uh, contracts or something like that. Absolutely fantastic. I will let you have a final word that you'd like to share, something you want to uh, tell us, our viewers, our listeners. Um, sure. Well, I think um, congratulations if you are in the middle of writing a book or you've finished writing a book. I want to congratulate you first and foremost because uh, it's certainly not an easy thing to do, and um, but it's a really worthwhile thing to do. I think it's wonderful that you want to share your story. So that's really fabulous. Congratulations. Um, in relation to how you get your book out into the marketplace, obviously the launch is, is only one way of those things. I'm sure Sigrid's got a uh, hundred different ways that you can get your book into the hands of the readers that you want to get them into. But just make sure that you're always thinking about those readers. You're always thinking about the person that is going to consume your product and how you can improve their experience that's i'm all about experiences i'm all about audience experiences and i'm constantly looking for ways that i can help event producers give better audience experiences so i would encourage you to do the same thank you that is just absolutely wonderful sally portius from red lanyard i'll put some links below the video so you can get in touch you can get that free download to get a first glimpse at, at an event guide that sally has created um, get it right from the professional right there. Thank you for your time. It's been really great talking with you. And we'll Thank see you, Sigrid.
yeah no it's been wonderful thanks so much for having me bye-bye bye everyone